Good morning. This is your midweek encouragement video. We're going to dive right in. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 30 this week, and we're going to talk about wisdom from an unfamiliar source. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30. If you have a Bible that has like little headings where it gives you like this is what this section's about. Um, it might say something about a person named Agur. Agur is credited with writing all of chapter 30 of Proverbs. Uh, but what's weird is we're not really sure who Agur is. A lot of church tradition kind of holds that, that this is kind of where he is mentioned. Um, and we're not even sure where he is coming from. With this in mind, it, would, it could be tempting for us to say, well, I don't know this guy. Um, or, or, well, he's not an, an un, a known, like, credible uh, person in the Bible story. And, and so I, I don't know if I want the wisdom that he has for me. But something that happens when we begin to read the Bible in a way that we, uh, both today and in the past in church history, have tried to determine what should we keep or what should be scripture and what is scripture and what indicates to us that it has been inspired by God. One of those is how what is said, does it align with what is said elsewhere? Is it in agreement with God's word? We're going to look at Agur's proverb today uh, and, and kind of see for ourselves what his wisdom has to say. Proverbs chapter 30, starting in verse 1. It says, the words of Agur, son of Jaka, the oracle. The man declares, I am weary, O God. I am weary, O God, and worn out. Surely I am too stupid to be a man. I have not the understanding of a man. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches and feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. So we are told that this person named Agur is the son of Jaka uh, and, and that he wrote this oracle. And besides that, we don't really get a lot about him. And so we should observe his wisdom. And First, he reflects on man's futility in comparison with God's might and wisdom and greatness. This is different than most patterns of ancient wisdom. Usually ancient wisdom says it wants to establish the person who has the wisdom as this, this credible and this good and big source, so that way you will continue to turn to them for wisdom. Agur does the opposite. He goes, who am I that you're going to listen to me anyway? And he asks some hypothetical questions to note the greatness of God compared to our own limitations as humans. He says, who has ascended to heaven and come down? Not man. Who has gathered up the wind in his fists? It's not men. Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? I don't even know, I don't even know how or what that means, <laughs> but we can't do it. Who has established the ends of the earth? It isn't us. So Agur is, the implication is, is that God can and has done all of these things. And then he poses this interesting question. It is as if he's talking to us and we know that he means God, but he says, what is his name? Remember, the, recall what Moses asked God when he has that encounter in the burning bush. Who do I tell the people that you are? And God tells him, I am. And then he says, what is his son's name? Who is that? And then Agur makes this conclusion about God's word. He says, God's word always proves true. And God is a shield to those 
who, tra- who rest in him. In other words, God's word proves true. And because God's word proves true, God is a shield to those who take their refuge in him. Also, he notes, we should not add to God's word. Uh, do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. If we add to God's words, it's not from God, it's from us. Next, Agur issues a prayer. And what's interesting is this prayer is the only prayer that is found in the book of Proverbs. And he prays for a handful of things. He prays that God would remove falsehood from him. He prays for contentment. He prays for his needs to be met. And he prays for whatever livelihood he can have that will cause him to be able to seek after the Lord. Agur is a mysterious source of wisdom. He's a weird guy. We don't really know a lot about him. But the teacher includes his wisdom in the Proverbs because Agur, by his words, shows that he knows godly wisdom from any source is worth following. We as followers should test wisdom to see if it agrees with God's word. And Agur's wisdom is this. God is far greater than us. God's word proves true, and we should not try to add to it. We should pray for, to God for contentment and for whatever we could get that would cause us to seek God more. And so I'm going to leave you today, um, as we pray together, with his prayer. Dear Lord, remove far from us the falsehood and lying that we might be tempted with. God, I pray that you would give us neither poverty nor riches, but but, uh, give us with exactly what we need to be in service to you. Pray that we would not have too much and and get proud and maybe deny you. I pray that we would um, not have too little and thus be tempted to sin uh, and and bring dishonor to your name. God, I pray that, that you would help us to take these words into our lives today. In your name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, y'all. Regular youth group this Sunday. We will see you at four. Love you guys. Have a good rest of your week. Bye, y'all.